Now we want to do this one step transfer posting. And where do we do that? You do it right here in MyGo. Go to MyGo and instead of goods receipt, select transfer posting. And see these options would have changed. You don't see the purchase order anymore. But instead, you see this. Right? <clears throat> and what do you want to do? You want to transfer hundred pounds or kilos of coffee from raw material storage location to the location where it belongs coffee beans so I'm going to enter the material here the plant and where are we transferring it from you see the from here we are transferring it from the raw material to where are you transferring it to? To the coffee storage location. Oops. And how much do you want to transfer? Well, we want to transfer 100 pounds of coffee. Right? And you see, when you click on the where tab from quantity we're going to move on to the where tab and it says 301 transfer tf from plant to plant in our case we are transferring from one storage location to another storage location from here to here and both of them belong to the same plant so it's not really a transfer from one plant to another it's really transfer within the plant so this movement type 301 is not the right type of movement so which one is correct so what's the right movement type Alright, so it's not 301. Instead, it is this 311 transfer posting storage location. Now, I know what you're thinking right now. There are so many different movement types. What are these numbers? Do I have to remember them? The simple answer is no. You don't have to remember any of these movement types. Well, through the course of time, when you start doing so many different things in inventory management and purchasing, you'll happen to remember some of them. And that should be good enough. But remember that a movement type technically is what does all these goods movements, goods transfers, transformation and value, so many different things behind the scenes. That's just SAP's way of doing these goods movements or goods transfers. So you'll have to understand that when you do a goods receipt, there is a movement type that runs behind the scenes to do all the accounting work for you. When I mean accounting work, it could be reduction in inventory in one storage location or addition of inventory in another storage location, doing or updating the accounting documents behind the scenes. Purely from an inventory perspective and accounting perspective, the movement type is what is going to handle all these things. 
So why is movement type used? The reason is very simple. So that the person in the warehouse doing a particular transaction need not worry about what really happens to the inventory and what really happens to accounting. He can be oblivious to all that stuff. He can just simply do his my go and be done with it. Behind the scenes, SAP through the use of a proper movement type is going to take care of what needs to be done. We'll slowly see what are the things that happen behind the scenes. But for now, understand that every inventory movement happens behind the scenes through the use of a movement type. The movement type is basically a three digit number followed by a letter. And we'll go into the configuration of the movement types in the next set of chapters. All right, so select 311 and hit enter. And you see it's transfer within the plant, right? So what's really happening here? We are transferring coffee beans of quantity 100 from the raw material storage location to the coffee bean storage location. That's what we wanted to do here, right? All right, let's do that. And before we do that, let's go to MMBE. Put coffee beans in here. In the Chicago plant, hit execute. In the raw material storage location, there is a quantity of 160 that can be used. And in the coffee storage location, there are 630. And when you move a quantity of 100 from here to here, obviously this is going to be down by 100 and this is going to be up by 100. So let's do the transaction in MyGo and see how the inventory is affected. Okay, let's go and save this. All right, material document is posted. So I'm going to refresh the screen, the MMBE. And did you see that? From 160, this has gone down to 60, and they have been added to the coffee bean storage location. Now, let's take this material document like so. And the way to see a material document is go to MB03. Paste your material document in there. Hit enter. And you see that from raw material to the coffee storage location, a quantity of 100 has been posted. And the material movements that we have used is listed in here. And if you want to look at the accounting document, it says that you don't really have an accounting document. Why is that? That is because anything that happens within the plant does not need an accounting document. Let me explain what, I'm, what I mean by that. So what are we doing here? We are trying to transfer some goods from the raw material to the coffee beans storage location. And when we are doing that, the ownership still lies with the Chicago plant, right? So who cares about accounting? 
it's all still with chicago accounting is not done at the storage location level it's done at the plant level. and because of that no accounting document is generated and if you want to understand what an accounting document is we have seen what happens at the end of an invoice basically it creates an entry in accounts and similar to the way accounts are being posted to after invoice creation in the same way accounts are being posted to after a goods movement has happened that is if there is a change in accounting now don't worry too much about this accounting stuff it's not something we need to worry about at this point but just understand that the movement type will take care of the accounting for you number 1 and number 2 in the case that we have just done no accounting document is generated because the transfer of goods really happened within the plant it's like saying i moved some stuff in my home from my kitchen to my garage does it really matter well it matters from a physical inventory or stock or goods perspective but does it really matter from an accounting perspective it's all still in your home you don't need to do any accounting you might ask me as opposed to what what situation might demand some accounting if you move some goods from your home to your neighbor's home then you need accounting right or if you have two homes one in chicago and one in san francisco and if you move the goods from the san francisco plant to the chicago plant then you would need some level of accounting but if you move the goods from your kitchen to your garage then you don't need accounting as simple as that right so what have we learned here we have learned that there's something called as transfer posting which is a function in mygo that you can do to transfer goods from one storage location to another within the plant this step is called one step transfer posting again we have a question i can sense is there a two step transfer posting or a three step transfer posting well there is a two step transfer posting for sure and when do you use a two step versus a one step well let's see well physically is it happening instantly well if it just takes you know 30 minutes or 1 hour then i think it's fine it's no big deal but if it takes more time than that say a day or two and you are dealing with large quantities of stock it's not just one coffee beans here maybe you are a big chain and you get so many different stock movements happening then anybody who is running an inventory report would get a wrong picture on what's the total value of its stock because this 100 is still not in the coffee warehouse it's in the van or the truck so there's got to be a better way of doing this that better way is through the use of a two step transfer process so in two step transfer posting what you do is you remove stock from the storage location but you don't add it instantly here instead you put it in another column here called stock in transit 
meaning there is going to be a hundred quantity of stock which is in transit it's not here yet it's not in this storage location yet but when you do an inventory report you'll know what is in the storage location and what is in the truck stock in transit is what is there in the truck stock in the storage location is what is there in the storage location so you are trying to differentiate what physically is with you versus what physically is not there with you so that is a two step transfer posting the first step is to remove stock when you remove it it's automatically placed in stock in transit and when the truck arrives at the coffee storage location on the eastern suburb you're going to move the goods from stock in transit to the actual storage location so let's do this so how much do you have here let's just do a quick refresh so we have 60 in the raw material and 730 in the coffee warehouse let's just say we move 30 from raw to coffee how do we do that you go to my go and transfer posting and instead of a one step you do a two step so which material is it so it's a coffee beans which plant from chicago one raw material warehouse to the coffee warehouse right okay and the quantity is 30 pounds and what is the movement type that we want to use we want to use a two step movement type right so we want to use a 3 1 what does it say so it just says removal from storage 311 said transfer posting from one storage location to other 313 just says remove from storage so we are removing it from storage and putting it in a temporary stock in transit situation and from that we're going to move it back to the storage location so do that 313 so removal from the storage location and save it all right so here is what we want to do let's move this column a little bit to the left we have removed 30 from the raw material storage location placed it into the coffee storage location but not directly but into the stock in transit why because it's not there in the stock of coffee yet it's still in transit so using 3 1 3 minus we have removed 30 quantity of stock from the raw material storage location and using 3 1 3 plus movement type we have placed it in the stock in transit say in a day or two the truck comes in with the 30 pounds of coffee and now we need to place it back into the coffee bean storage location so this was done 
using a transfer posting number four nine zero 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 eight zero one five if you want to go view that you can view that here using m b zero three enter the document number and one was a three one three minus which removed it from the raw material storage location and a three one three plus which placed it in the coffee beans storage locations in transit stock type so this is an in transit now we are going to move it back to the actual storage location for unrestricted use so the truck has come in and what we are going to do is do a migo and do a place in storage previously we have used transfer posting now we are going to do a place in storage so we are going to place the 30 pounds of coffee from the stock in transit to unrestricted use. So paste that material document in there, hit enter. The quantity, the material, which storage location it is in, all that stuff will be copied over for you. Make sure the quantity is right. So if there is some quantity that's damaged in transit, you can change this quantity. And where is it? It's going to be in the coffee bean storage location. So click item OK. Click on save. And that is done. Now what should happen here if I click on refresh? So if I refresh the screen, this should go away and this should change to 760, right? So we are adding the stock that's in the truck into unrestricted use. Let's do that. Click refresh and The columns got rearranged, so I'm going to pull it back. So there you go. This is now 760 as we expected. And the stock in transit of 30 is gone. It's been added to unrestricted use. So this is a two-step stock transfer. So earlier, we have seen a one-step stock transfer using transfer posting and now we have seen a two-step stock transfer again using transfer posting and place into storage now you might be wondering why i am going back and forth between stock transfer and transfer posting Sometimes I'm using these terms interchangeably. Well, in very strict terms, transfer posting is different from stock transfer. And we are going to understand those differences in one of the next chapters. But for now, just understand that what we have done essentially in these cases, in the one-step stock transfer, and two step stocks transfer is within a plant there were many storage locations and if we wanted to move from one storage location to another we were using transfer posting as a one step process so if you remove it from here, it's there already. 
there is no intermediary space you remove it here it's there already so this process is typically used when the storage locations are nearby like 10 feet 100 feet 1 mile 2 miles where there is you know stock in transit is not really an additional step it's not required but in the same case of a plant with three storage locations if you want to transfer the goods or stock from one storage location to another and the distance between the storage locations is quite apart if you remove 30 pounds here 30 pounds is not really added here just yet you could do the same one step process here as well but that does not correctly represent the stock situation so if it were 30 it's no big deal nobody cares what if it were 30,000 pounds of coffee if you take it out from this storage location and the target storage location is 200 miles away in which case it's not ready for use now in the storage location it's still in the truck isn't it so that's got to be represented in the system although the ownership will lie with this storage location it's still in transit of this storage location so which clearly specifies that it's not ready yet so don't go about reserving those goods or promising those goods to the customer from this storage location it's not ready yet and when it's ready the truck has come in you can move the 30,000 quantity or 30 quantity that's in transit into unrestricted use it's only when the goods are in unrestricted use that they can be used for any kind of purpose it could be that a customer has asked for it or it could be the barista has asked for it or it could be for our own internal consumption so this was done using a two-step process and both are examples of transfer of stock in this case transfer from one storage location to another now I know I've been confusing you with in transit unrestricted quality blocked so many different terms 